when i connect with individuals who are preparing for devops interviews they frequently highlighting the significance of infrastructure and automation tools like terraform in these interviews this prompted me to deal these topics and provide in depth discussions and practical demonstrations in this video hey folks i am yar shankar from velaxi technologies in this video we are going to see what is dot terraform directory then dependency log file that is terraform.log.hcl then terraform state file that is terraform.tf state file how it works then backend in terraform i mean to say remote backend how we can use it next how to use terraform state file in a team so this is one of the commonly asked interview questions so to demonstrate this one even i have prepared all this i will try to cover entire stuff in a single video if it doesn't work i will be split into two parts and i'm going to demonstrate each topic with the lab so grab a cup of coffee and sit comfortably if you are new to terraform then please go and watch our other terraform related videos where we have shown how to install terraform on windows how to write first terraform file how to create vpc how to use variables and how to set up kubernetes cluster and many more so these concepts helps you to understand current concept more clear all right now let's get back to our discussion so for this one as i said we are going through with the labs i have already prepared couple of terraform files and i just named it as versions based on what kind of topic we are discussing we are going to use that terraform file i have mentioned all the required resources links in the description of this video there you can find this github link as well first let's see the v1 terraform dir demo in this i am using two blocks that is provider and resource block so in the provider we are using aws as our provider and region us east one and this i have already explained in my other video that is how to write your terraform file next we are creating a resource that is aws instance and this is the ami id we are creating t2 micro and server name is going to be demo server okay so first we are going to use this code let me copy this code in the local system i have created a directory called terraform state file let me copy it over here so to copy i am going to our visual studio code i am already in that directory you can see here terraform state file directory let me open the new file and i am just copying it and let me save this file as main.tf okay that is how we are going to use the naming convention in the real world so same i am trying to follow over here so this is a terraform file so that is the reason it is .tf file so in this directory we have only main.tf at this moment now i would like to execute this terraform script for that we need to open the terminal so go here terminal new terminal so let me open this one and i am in the current folder that is terraform state file now if i check there is a main.tf file i hope you know the terraform commands if you don't know again you go and check with our previous videos i have already explained that so let me execute our first command that is terraform init okay so initialization let's see what will happen and just see over here we have main.tf at this moment let's see what will happen once we execute this command you can see here initializing provider plugin it is trying to pull the provider that is hashicorp aws version sorry version 5.15.0 so this is the aws provider version if you want to check it out you can just go and search for aws provider terraform so aws provider over here if you check use provider and current version is 5.15 this is the latest version it same thing it has been downloaded but where does it kept that is where dot terraform comes into the picture so whenever we are using any plugin any plugins or providers that will be downloaded under dot terraform so if i open this one you can see here provider registry and uh, it downloaded terraform provider aws version 5.15.0 some cases we will have more providers okay in my organization we are using aws and data dot because both are required okay based on what is the requirement we will have multiple providers but in most of the cases you can see the cloud provider over here 
Sometimes in the real world, we will call other modules from the other GitHub repositories or Bitbucket repositories. Those also get copied over here. That is too advanced concept, but for now, just think that it will be having all the providers information in the data terraform. That's all about the data terraform. Now let's see the other one that is dot terraform lock dot HCL. So whenever we are running this terraform init at the same time, even this terraform dot lock dot HCL also got created. And uh, if I click on this one just to open and if you see here, it is having the information of the provider so and so and uh, version 5.15.0 and hashes, okay, some additional information is it is there. So what is the purpose of Terraform log.hcl? It is quite simple. Whenever we are developing Terraform files, we will develop with based on the current provider version. What is our current provider version? That is AWS v5.15.0 based on this one we are going to develop our terraform files let's take that after some time you found a new aws provider so whenever you have a new provider if you download it your current scripts might work or might not work because sometimes newer version can able to understand the scripts what we have written sometimes there might be little bit of changes are required to overcome this problem this dependency lock file will help so this dependency lock file that is terraform lock.hcl will have the information of the what is the provider version. So even the latest one will come, it doesn't download the latest one. So just to check it out, okay, let me try to run the terraform init once again. You can see here, it is saying that reusing provider version hashicorp aws from the dependency lock file. So from this file, okay, it is using the same provider. Just to experiment, okay, how this Terraform log file does work. So we don't have the latest AWS provider version. I will try to downgrade the AWS provider version. Let's take that I want to use AWS provider version, which is less than five version. That is where I have stored this one in the GitHub repository. Now let's go to the dependency log file demo. Over here, if you see, okay, we are using the same code, but extra what we are doing is we are adding one more block called Terraform block. Over here, we are mentioning that AWS provider version should be less than 5. I am saying that I don't require the version greater than 5, less than 5. Let me copy only this snippet and uh, go here and I will add on top of provider and let me save this file. Okay. This time, I will try to run the Terraform init once again. And we'll see what will happen. You can see here error failed to query available provider packages. So reusing the provider from the dependency lock, but the problem over here is in the dependency lock we are trying to use the version 5. Dot something, but here we are looking for lesser version. So this is how dependency lock file helps us to prevent to use other provider versions in this code. So that our code no need to update. It will work with the version 5.15. So there won't be any issue. But I still want to use the lower version. What I can do? In such cases, you just need to remove this one. So that whenever you remove it. Okay. I'm just going to delete it. Okay. And uh, another thing is you just check over here. We have only one provider. Let me rerun this one. Okay. Terraform init. And this time it is going to download the version which is lesser than to 5 that is v4.67 and same thing will get update over here okay it's completed and over here you can see there are two AWS provider versions one is 5.15 another one is 4.67 and now it will come up with the latest version based on our main.tf file we are mentioning version as 5.0 so it will be locked with the lower version than 5 okay so that is how dependency lock file or dot terraform dot lock dot hcl does work. All right. Now let's move on to the next step that is terraform state file. Now this is how our environment is defined at this moment. This is my local system where I have installed terraform and I have written a terraform file as well over here and we have AWS. Now whenever we run this terraform file, how to run this terraform file? Initially we run terraform plan then everything is okay then we are going to run terraform apply whenever we run this terraform apply at this moment it is going to create an ec2 instance that is how we defined right that is demo server it is going to create it 
So whenever it creates an instance, this instance related information within this AWS will be stored in the Terraform file. This Terraform file is a JSON file and this information will be stored in this Terraform file. Now what is Terraform file? Terraform file is a file which contains information related to your current infrastructure which is provisioned by the Terraform. So whatever is provisioned by the Terraform, okay, which is already present in our AWS account, that will be updated in our Terraform file. And this Terraform state file will be created whenever we run Terraform apply at faster time. Subsequent times it will be keep on getting updated. And this Terraform file will be created in our local system. So to demonstrate this one, I am going to execute further commands in our terminal. And so far if you see, we have just executed Terraform in it. So further commands, Terraform validate we have. Okay, it is not necessary, but I am just running it. I am sure that this code is going to work. Okay, this is saying that the configuration is valid. And uh, then Terraform plan. Okay, instead of running over here, I can do one more thing. That is in this directory, I can open git bash. So that it will be easy for you to understand. So I will run the Terraform commands over here. And you can review the code over here. So that it will be easy. Main.tf. So this is the complete code. And I am going to run the commands over here. So you can see here I am in the main.tf and ls-la. You can check the dot terraform and dot terraform dot log dot hcl. Now terraform plan. So terraform plan is like a dry run. Okay. It is going to create one resource that is EC2 instance. And if I go and check AWS instance Amazon server, it is going to create it. To actually create terraform apply so this is the command and one more thing i forgot to show you so over here if you check now it is creating the terraform state file okay so it is creating one resource and yes to execute it and if i go and check it to, it doesn't have any information at this moment once we have created this you can see the content over here and uh, I just logged into my AWS console. So this is my AWS console. I have already one GitLab runner and uh, one demo server has been terminated. So it should create a new EC2 instance. So let's go back. Sorry. So it is creating an EC2 instance. Okay. It has been created successfully. Let me go and check it out. And uh, Yes, it has been created successfully. And another thing is, if I go and check my Terraform state file, it has the information related to our AWS instance because the current infrastructure information get updated over here. And uh, even you can see what is the instance type, T2 micro, instance ID. All this information is updated over here. Okay. Now, if I run this command once again, I mean to say Terraform apply, it says that this is already up to date our terraform script is up to date yep you can see here terraform has compared your real infrastructure against your configuration and found no differences so no changes are needed that's what it is saying just to, to test it out we'll do one thing we'll copy this terraform state file into some other location okay so i will create a temporary folder over here temp and i just copy this file into the temp where we are working so we don't have any any terraform state file over here now let's try to execute the same command and we'll see what will happen okay you can see here it is trying to add one resource that is the ec2 instance which we have already created that is the importance of terraform state file so we need to make sure that our terraform state file is in the right location so let me cancel this operation. So no, whenever I say no, you can see here this Terraform file is disappeared and I'm going to copy it from temp location to current location. Okay, mood, mood and now I'm deleting this temp, temp directory. Okay, so that is the importance of Terraform state file. Now what is the definition of Terraform state file? Terraform state file is a file which contains current running environment information which is provisioned by the Terraform. Okay, that is the Terraform state file. 
Now, where is our Terraform state file is located? It is in our local system. But keeping it in our local system is not advised. Why? Because if our system is get corrupted or accidentally if you delete this file, then how do you know that what infrastructure is running? Whenever you try to run Terraform apply again, it will try to reproduce the entire infrastructure which creates the mess. That's the reason we need to maintain this Terraform state file in a secure location. That is where backend comes into the picture. There are multiple backends. If you take AWS, S3 you can use it as a backend. For Azure, Azure Blob Storage you can use. HashiCorp, HashiCorp Cloud you can use. Like that various backends are available. For us, we are already using AWS. We are going to use AWS S3 bucket as our remote backend. For that, of course, we need to provision an S3 bucket. Before provisioning S3 bucket, I would like to give you an update. I have released a couple of new courses on Udemy platform. If you are interested, you can check it out. This is DevOps project 2, which, which is having a advanced to our DevOps project 1. So I have discussed about Jenkins files, Sonar Cube, Terraform and few other new tools. Even Prometheus Grafana also discussed. At this moment, it is highest rated in the DevOps segment. And also we have released one more new course that is how the real-time microservices does work in the Kubernetes. Okay, this is done by Mr. Piaredi. You can check out this course. Again, we have Terraform dedicated course over here to provision the three-tier architecture with help of Jenkins. So these are the courses we have released recently. You can check it out. I am providing the links in the description of this video. And also you can follow me in the LinkedIn. In the LinkedIn, I am going to publish some of the articles related to AWS and cloud. And also if you achieve your milestone, okay, please tag me so that I am going to congratulate each one of you who has completed it. Apart from this, I am also in Instagram that is Ravdison. If you want to know about me personally, then you can connect me over here. That's all I would like to share and let's jump back to our discussion. So now we need to provision our S3 bucket. To provision our S3 bucket, I have already updated the code in the V3. So V3 Terraform state file demo. So over here we have a resource called AWS S3 bucket and we are creating and the life cycle if you check prevent to destroy nothing but we are not allowing to destroy this S3 bucket. That is how we will do in the real world. So similar kind of thing I am trying to uh, replicate over here because if we lose this bucket you are going to lose your Terraform state file. So make sure that this is not destroyed by the Terraform. So let's go back to our code and I will just add this snippet, save this resource and let's run it again. Let's run our Terraform plan. So it is taking little bit of time so that uh, from next update onwards, I will go with the directly Terraform apply itself. Okay, it is trying to add one resource that is S3 bucket. Terraform apply minus minus auto approve and you can see here it is compared with our current infrastructure and it is going to create only one resource because of the terraform sorry terraform state file otherwise it might create a two, two resources all right so it has been successfully completed and if i go and check in my s3 bucket we don't have any buckets before creating it and uh, go to buckets and uh, you can see here Velaxi Terraform state file. This is the one which just created. All right. This is how we can create the S3 bucket. Now we can enable or we can use this as a backend to store our Terraform state file. So this became a lengthy video. So I'm stopping it over here. I'm going to show you that in the next video. Thank you. I hope this video is informative. If, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up so that it will helps to this video to reach more people. Thank you and see you in the next video.